Hello, I wanted to hop on here today and give you some top tips about how to really excel in video conferences. I've been having lots of questions about this from my own clients um, and also from people who are parts of this group and who follow me um, because this is a new order. A new world order that we're in, isn't it, for a lot of people who haven't been used to regularly having video conferences, speaking on Zoom and other similar platforms. And it can be quite difficult to do for the first time if you're not used to it. So I'm going to give you my top tips for conducting successful meetings on Zoom. And the first thing I want to say is set your workspace up in a way that works for you. I have seen a lot of people looming into shot, having the camera beneath them so that, frankly, it's pretty unflattering and not very comfortable because your neck is like this the whole time. I've seen people doing Zoom calls in dark little box rooms where no one else can see them properly. And, you know, not only is it uncomfortable for you if it's not set up properly, but it also doesn't look very professional and polished and it can be quite distracting. For example, if you're moving around on a phone and, um, you know, that camera shot isn't stable. So set yourself up to win. Make what is not an easy situation, let's face it, we're all having to work in new ways. Make it easier for you. I recommend getting a good light somewhere here behind your computer. I've got one slightly to the side of my computer so that, you know, it's lighting me and you can see me. Um, and when you're speaking, you'll notice that I look like I'm looking at you at the moment because I'm looking at my camera. That's something else that I see people doing. They're not looking at the camera when they're speaking. They're looking at the people who they're speaking to. And so that has the effect of, you know, if my eyes are all around here looking at the other people on the shot, it's not very engaging if I'm speaking to you like that. Far more engaging if I look like I'm eyeballing you. So remember to look at your camera and have it at eye level. You want to be level with the shot. It's the most flattering way. You don't want to be looming over it and giving yourself a neck ache. Of course, background matters too. I have a home office, I work a lot from home, so my background is you know, relatively neutral and fine. Um, you may not have that, you may not be used to working from home. So have an explore about what functionality you have um, through your video conferencing system. Zoom, which is what I use and what I'm recording this video on, um, has some backgrounds, some of them quite funny, um, but some of them, you know, it's really useful if you have a cluttered background, uh, a background that you don't want to be sharing for your um, conference call. Perhaps you have kids, lots of kids or kids toys in the background. You can um, put a different background up there. You don't just have to use the ones that Zoom has. Um, Shutterstock, for example, has created lots of nice backgrounds that you can use in Zoom. So I really recommend that you get familiar with the functionality of the platform that you're using because there are loads of things that you can do that you may not be aware of. Obviously you can share screen when you are having conversations with people. There are different ways for people to raise hands. Um, there's a chat option in Zoom. There are lots of different things that you can do to make communication easier because of course it is harder to have a successful meeting when it's virtual just the fact that it makes it so much harder to interject or raise a hand or make a point. It's harder to have a natural flowing conversation. So it's really important to frame expectations at the beginning of that meeting about how it's going to go. And first of all, my strong advice is that you let everybody know beforehand that this meeting is going to be in vision. If people are not in vision, in that meeting, you can bet that they're not really focused. They're gonna be on their phones, they're gonna be in the queue for a cardo trying to get a delivery slot, they're gonna be you know, doing something with the kids in the background, they're not gonna be focused 100% on this meeting. So frame the expectation at the beginning. When you set that meeting in the diary, say, guys, please join this by video call. And also I suggest that you ask people to put it on gallery view. So in Zoom, for example, you have an option to be on speaker view where you can see in, in the frame just the person who's speaking, or you can have it on gallery view where you can see all the participants. Go for gallery view. Ask people to put it on gallery view so that you're all part of it and you're all involved. That means that you need to be engaged when you're on gallery view. So that means, you know, looking forward and 
um, looking like you're listening. And obviously you can take notes and things, but you don't want to be running here, there and everywhere and, you know, on your phone. Act how you want others to act on that meeting. And when you begin that meeting, then people know their envision, frame the interaction, let them know what's going to happen. So say to them, I'm going to speak for 10 minutes. I'm going to present to you for 10 minutes. And then I want to hear your thoughts on X, Y, and Z. Please use the raise hand icon to raise your hand um, and, and give me your thoughts. And if you let people know at the top of that meeting what you expect from them, then they're far more likely to do it. Often people just sort of assume that meeting etiquette is something that others understand and we don't you know, actually say and set out those expectations and then... You know, there's no hope of people sticking to it. Really recommend that you have an agenda too. This is true of all meetings, not just virtual ones. The worst thing you can do in any meeting is overrun. And I see this so often. There'll be a number of items on the agenda and only half will have been got through by the end of the meeting and the meeting overruns and items get, you know, dropped off the, the bottom of the agenda. What I suggest is that you put a time on each of those items in the agenda. And if you haven't come to a resolution by the time, uh, when the time is up, then you stop talking about it and you return to it at the end if there's time. But it really focuses minds if people know that. And again, you frame that at the top of the meeting and say, guys, we've got 10 minutes for each of these items on the agenda. If we haven't come to a resolution, we're stopping talking about it and we're moving on. I've been hearing from a lot of clients how they're spending a lot of time on these sorts of virtual meetings at the moment. And it's because we're in a new world order. People are just getting to grips with how to work in this way. And I think there's quite a lot of frenetic activity trying to show how busy we are and let's get in touch with everyone and let them know what we're doing. So that having a time that you stick to on an agenda guards against that. But the other really important thing to guard against that is to make sure that every single person who is in that meeting needs to be there. Sounds obvious, doesn't it? But in practice, people often disregard this. It's a bit like the same thinking that goes into copying in lots of people on an email just to cover your back. So many emails are sent <laughs> that don't need to be sent to people who don't really need to know things, but we just copy everyone in in the hope that, oh God, just in case, you know, we'll copy everyone in so I've covered myself. It's time wasting. It's the, tr the same with meetings as well. If someone has nothing to say in a meeting, they shouldn't be there. And that's a really good guide for yourself. I recommend that everybody who attends a meeting knows that they're expected to contribute in some way and you need to frame that beforehand before the meeting you'll need to say to them i want to hear from each of you on xyz um, at some point if you look at that list of names of attendees and you think actually bob doesn't really need to say anything in this meeting then ask yourself does bob need to be there at all you know we're all facing time pressures at the moment we're all many people are juggling work with family life, homeschooling and all the rest of it. So now more than ever, be mindful of how much work you're generating and do people really need to be there? Do we need to take up this time on this meeting? Can we keep it tighter? And those suggestions that I've made, I hope will make it easier for you to keep it really tight. One other thing, remember to mute anybody who isn't speaking and tell people to mute themselves when they're not speaking or else you're going to be hearing loads of rustling and it's quite painful, particularly if you're one of those people who uses earphones. Um, so yeah, get people to only unmute themselves when they are ready to speak. And they're really my top tips. Get the tech sorted in a way that works for you so that you're looking level, you're looking at camera, you've got the right lighting, you're not looming over someone in picture. Like I saw a recent cabinet virtual meeting with Boris Johnson and co. I saw a screenshot of one of their meetings and it was awful. They were all looking in the wrong place. Many people were looming over the screen. It was dark in many cases. It didn't look good. It didn't look professional. And ultimately we are still trying to remain professional in these extraordinary times. So set the technology up to work for you. Get really used to your platform's technology. What can you do? Can you have a chat function? Can you raise hands? Can you have a background that, that looks better than the one that you currently have? 
frame expectations for that meeting. Let people know beforehand what's expected of them, that you're going to want them to contribute, that this is going to be time bound, that you want them to show up, be on camera, be engaged. Be engaged yourself on camera. When you're speaking, look at your camera. Don't look at the other people in the meeting. Eyeball them so that at least they feel that they're having this human contact, even if we are all working remotely now. And last of all, mute yourself and tell others to mute themselves too, so that we can make it as easy a listening experience as possible. If you want any more tips about virtual meetings, then do post some questions below. I've got something coming up in the next few days for you if you want to work on your presenting more generally in this very strange lockdown time. I've been hearing from people that they have a bit more time on their hands and they want to use this time to improve their presenting, to improve their communication so that when we all get back to normal, that they're going to be in a really good place. So I've got something specifically for lockdown that I'm going to be um, telling you about in the next few days. But for now, if you have any specific questions about video calling, as I say, put those questions in the link below. And I look forward to hearing from you. Bye bye for now.